Sky here. Now you may have already seen the news and you may not, but what I want to talk about is the new DJI Inspire 1. Now the DJI Inspire 1 is quite different from what we've seen so far, not only from a drone perspective, but from a DJI drone perspective. Because in the past we've seen the DJI Phantom series and then we've seen the Pro Grade Spreading Wing series. But what is the DJI Inspire 1? Well, I'm going to give you my honest feedback and I've I've flown the uh, Phantom 1.1.1 as well as the Phantom 2 Vision Plus quite extensively. You can check out my video playlist that this video is in and you'll see that I've got hundreds of videos. So I've had a lot of flight time. So I'm going to tell you the good and the bad in regards to the DJI Inspire 1. You can check the link within this video's description for more information and to order the Inspire 1, but I'm just going to give you my candid feedback. So from a uh, from a design perspective, I think it's very cool. What I like most is that when the, uh, when the DJI Inspire 1 is in flight, that the, that the pieces, the arms that the, uh, that the propellers are attached to, they go up. So what that means is, is that while it's airborne, you're not gonna get the landing gear like you do. Sometimes when you're filming with a Phantom, you can get the landing gear in the frame, depending upon how you, uh, how you're flying the Phantom and the position of the camera. But since there's no camera to come into the frame with the arms and the propellers up, you get a really cool uh, unobstructed view. Also from a design perspective, I like how, the, uh, how that design makes the landing gear more spread out. So with the Phantom when you were landing, you know, you were in an area about this big and not that it was too difficult to land, but sometimes it could get a little bit hairy. With the Inspire 1, you've got more, uh, more space, which makes those landings more easy. Also, the camera, and we'll go more in depth on the camera later, but the camera on the Inspire 1 is modular. That means that DJI understands that newer camera technologies are going to come out, and DJI understands that just because a new camera comes out, in this case, we're seeing the migration from HD to Ultra HD, also known as 4K, but they understand as new camera equipment, as camera equipment continues to evolve, that it doesn't make financial sense for most just to say, okay, well, there's a new camera, so now I've got to buy an entire new quadcopter. So they're making the, uh, the camera on the Inspire 1 module. From a, uh, and, and something I'm not sure about yet is, is the actual, and I'm looking at a picture of it out of the corner of my eye, since it does fold up and down in flight, that is a, that's definitely a, a pro, an advantage because you're getting, as I mentioned earlier, unobstructed camera views. But it's also another moving component. Not that it's going to fail. DJI does an incredible design job. I haven't had any problems with my Phantoms. And like I said, I've had the Phantom 1.1.1 and, uh, and the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. But what, where does this... Inspire One, where does it fit within the market? It's too expensive, at least at this point in time, to be a mainstream com consumer drone. You can go out and get a Phantom One right now for, for a few hundred bucks, but not everybody's going to be able to fork out close to three grand for, a, uh, for an Inspire One. If you're, serious, if you're serious about film, it could be valuable because you're getting the 4K. Obviously, if you want to do 4K on a budget, you could always get the, uh, get the Phantom 1 or the Phantom 2 and attach a GoPro camera to it. What you, the advantages you get with the Inspire 1, it's, you're getting the uh, camera integrated, so you're not having to deal with third-party camera, third-party hardware. I love GoPro, don't get me wrong. But with the Inspire 1, it's just all there. It's all together, just like the Phantom 2 was. And I loved how streamlined the update process of that was. And everything just worked together. And it worked well together. Now, one of the things that the Inspire 1 brings in that we haven't seen, at least I haven't seen in any other drones, is the ability to have two controllers. So you can have 
your camera operator while you're flying the drone. So for professional filming applications where you may want to focus on flying so that you don't run into an object that you're filming, you can have your camera operator capturing those shots, videos and or stills. So that's a really cool prosumer, or actually I guess you could say professional feature for that matter, that the, uh, that the DJI Inspire 1 unveils. So that's, that's a good, uh, and obviously the interface when you're doing the FPV, the first person view, you're now seeing that in 720p HD versus the Phantom 2 Vision Plus where it was a degraded, it wasn't HD quality, which wasn't a problem. But when there were, when there were small details that you were trying to pick up, it was harder to visualize that on a Phantom 2 Vision Plus than it would be if you were looking at it in, in, uh, in high definition. So it looks like a great platform. Now the price, as I had mentioned, unless this is something that that someone is uh, extremely serious about film and they want to be an early adopter, because I do feel that as this is out for a while, inevitably the price will probably drop. I mean, that's been the trend with most all technological items, especially the Phantoms. You've noticed that as the newer ones have come out, the other ones have become more reachable. So hopefully that'll be the same case with this. And it leads, it leads one to question, will there be a DJI Phantom 3 or will DJI just abandon the DJI Phantom form factor in favor of this Inspire type form factor? I don't know, time will tell. I'm personally on the fence. I mean, I'm not, uh, I, I like to adopt all new technologies, but for this, looking at it from, a, um, from an ad, added value perspective, the only thing from my perspective that I would get, that I would gain rather, from this would be obviously the 4K filming capabilities and the ability to have two people operating the craft, uh, someone on the camera and then someone flying. Is that a big enough incentive for me to, to consider this over other options? No. If I get to the point to where I need 4K video, I'll, I can just get a Phantom 2 and I won't splurge extra for the FPV and and all of that expensive stuff, but what I will do is uh, get a Phantom 2 and put my GoPro Hero 4 Black on it and film those 4K shots. Back to the Inspire 1, something that was really cool is that on the bottom of the, uh, on the remote, it's got an HDMI port. So if you have compatible glasses, I think the Carl Zeiss, Epson, Movio, or so, you, you'd have to check the link within this video's description you can find all of those, but that enables you to have eye wearable goggles to see the FPV versus using your smartphone or your iPad, which is pretty neat. And I know that's not a new technology. There's there's third party products that enable that functionality on the Phantoms and and I'm not bashing them. I just I like how everything out of the box works so I don't have to hunt and peck for uh, for various firmware updates, etc. And that's what I like about how DJI's done uh, done their products. I really wish this had come in under two grand. The fact that it's over two grand for me is just, it's, it, it's a deal breaker for me. But I'm not saying the DJI Inspire is not a good invention. I think it's, a, it's an incredible invention. And I can't wait to see this usher in some solid competition and create, uh, create a price war where these become more affordable. Because over two grand for something that's up in the air and to get those cool shots, inevitably, you're probably going to be flying over the water. To drop over two grand, potentially, in the ocean or the lake, that's a lot of cash for most people. So for that reason, I, I will not be an early adopter of the DJI Inspire 1. But what I am going to adopt, and I know it doesn't have 4K, the Parrot Bebop. Because I feel the price for the Parrot Bebop is perfect. I feel that the, uh, that the performance and the advantage of having such a small and lightweight drone really opens up an avenue that, uh, that others haven't been able to explore in the past. Because even this Inspire 1, which I love, it's not the optimal, hey, let's throw it on the backpack and let's go on a six mile hike through the wilderness and film a waterfall. It's, it's not, I mean, you could do it, carry it in a case and and I've done that. I've done that with the Phantom 1 and the Phantom, uh, uh, Phantom 2 Vision Plus. I've crawled through uh, Virgin Gorda, the Bass, at Devil's Bay, 
these rock formations. You can check out all my videos. I mean, I've, I've been through the sand and the mud and the, I've been swimming with it. So I'll do it. I'm not saying it's not doable. I'm just saying that larger weight and that larger size is not necessarily optimal. But I am stoked to see how this, how the uh, drone community reacts to the DJI Inspire 1. And I know a lot of people are gonna be, they're gonna be shocked by the sticker price. And a lot of people aren't gonna care because they were probably the people that were involved with the octocopters, et cetera, in the past that were super high end from a price perspective. And then they look at this and they will feel that it's, that it's uh, all in one, just works, great camera and the price is affordable. And I think that's what we're seeing here. And I hope that's what we're seeing. I hope that's the direction that DJI is taking. I, ho I hope they're looking at this like a prosumer camcorder. It's not your off the shelf cheap camcorder, but it's not a professional camcorder that you're gonna find in a, in a big Hollywood studio. It's kind of in the middle. And I hope that's the direction that DJI is taking with the, uh, with the Inspire 1, because I still wanna see the Phantom. I want to see a lighter, smaller, faster 4K Phantom that's well under two grand. I want to see that. But I also want to see this Inspire series continue to evolve and that technology become more affordable. Because right now for your mainstream user, like our Skies Adventure Channel, it's just it's it's too much. If it wasn't a flying object. I could imagine spending that much for something, but the fact that it's a flying object, it can crash into the ground, crash into the lake, that's a lot of money lost in the event of a crash. These are just my thoughts, what do you think? Again, check the link within this video's description, make your own, make your own decisions. It looks really awesome, and I'm not trying to say anything negative about it at all, but I am expressing my true opinions, like I always do here on YouTube.com forward slash irix guy so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already youtube.com forward slash irix guy and enjoy all my other videos too thanks for watching and y'all have a good day